a very good evening to you. We thank you very much for joining us on this uh, edition of Meet the President, which is uh, a show where you get to hear from those seeking to be president on their plans, their manifesto. Our question on social media continues, would you vote for Abduba Dida as president? At KTN News, at Yvonne Okwara, the hashtag is Meet the President. Keep your comments coming in. You have been tweeting us all evening. We look forward um, to engaging with him and uh, we'll speak to him in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at the journey that has been for the presidential candidate from the Tunza coalition. Before 2013, Mohamed Abduba Dida, a former high school teacher, was not well known to Kenyans until this day when he presented his nomination papers to contest for presidency. After the election, he went underground politically. Now he says he took time to engage himself in thinking and reading and preparing 15 lectures investigating why it is difficult for mankind to do the right thing, an observation he noted in the two campaign meetings he held in the run-up to the elections. I went to Mombasa. I got some 8,000 votes. And I just visited the place for one night. I gave two lectures. It gave me 8,000 votes. I visited Wazir. I gave one lecture. I got 8,000 votes. And I came back to my house. Malimu, as he is popularly known, is a stickler to rules, as depicted by this notice pinned in his Alliance for Real Change Party headquarters and the Ten Commandments. He has confirmed he is still on a mission to lead Kenya. I'm telling them now, I did it in 2013, it didn't happen, and I will try it in 2017. Just like other tough Jubilee critics, Dida claims Kenyans must make an informed decision during next year's general election if the country's leadership is to be rescued. But in the history of Kenya after independence, the worst president in terms of handling corruption that Kenya will ever and has recorded is Uhuru Kenyatta because he was himself the first one man. Asked about his controversial double appointment by both President Uhuru Kenyatta and then devolution CS Anwai Guru as chairman of the CDF in early 2014, he claims it was sort of a backdoor appointment where according to my thinking you take it and then you are thrown into the box of it is not legal, it is illegal. President Uhuru Kenyatta was to surprisingly revoke his nomination as debate raged over the manner in which the appointment had been done. I'm not the type of people who will seek for favors. Rush to this office, jiskume mwenyewe, I am not the type. Dida has ruled out any possibility of forming a coalition, even as a section of Kenyans think he should consider seeking another political seat, but not the presidency. I don't believe in that school of thought. If I, if I was to agree with anybody, I would not have gone an extra mile registering a political party. As for now, we should start with the lower seat. You understand yeah, the lower seat. For Dinda, I think he had some good policies, but uh, I don't think his time is ripe. Eh? Current President Uhuru Kenyatta was wise enough because he tried once, then uh, the following uh, election he never did. And the last one, the one that he went for, he made it because he did his calculations well. During the 2013 presidential debate, he emerged as the most hilarious candidate, but it seems that is his nature. We are just surviving because Kenyans are potentially people who love God. Practically, they may not be God-loving, but they have the potential. Theoretically, they can sing God. Because of that, maybe God is keeping us. So many Kenyans died in in Somalia. And uh, it just went like that. NYS thing came, whoa, 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 it is gone. Who killed people in Westgate? What, what, it disappeared. Who killed people in... Things come, nothing is done. 
and you just see the president so happy in gatherings. Yeah? You kuna chemical in the laughing gas in chemistry. The guy is always happy. I don't, and I don't know. For now, he continues with a membership recruitment drive in all counties as he prepares for his second stab at the presidency. Duncan Hemba, KTN News. And he joins me now to talk um, a little bit more about his second stab at the presidency. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome uh, to meet the president. So let's start off with, um, I'm interested to know, if in 2013 you'd have won and become president, what would Kenya be like today under your leadership? What would be markedly different? Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, you may think that in Kenya, the lifestyle is that of the human being. But we could have gone lower than the human being. And uh, physically, you could see human beings. But in character, we are animals. So one thing that I will have done is to raise the standards to restore the honor and dignity of the human being. One problem of Kenya, Africa, and the world today is the human being doesn't know his value. If the human being fails to understand his or her value, then there is nothing like the world. I read and I read about the value of the human being. I said I prepared lectures for anybody who wants to hear them. There is nothing God has created that supersedes the human being. And God says, I have placed him in charge to manage the system, the land masses, and the water bodies on my behalf. So not the way, not, the, no, not the, way uh -huh. the man, the human being wants it, but the way God wants it. We are representing God. So what is it that would be um, very different? You talk about the value of the human being, the value of the Kenyan, uh, presumably. So if you can give us some tangible things that Kenyans would say, OK, uh, our lives would have more value. In what ways specifically? When you don't know what you are, then you can be anything. A human being cannot sing anybody's song because of 500 shillings. A human being cannot go so low and so petty to follow a person blindly when he can swear he's taking them nowhere. They know this is a failure. This is a person who is corrupt. What this would is, your success look like? Walim? This is a person who has no vision. But uh, because our community may be appointed into a cabinet post, may be appointed into a directorate or whatever, so we are just going there. Our elders told us, our chairperson told us, that cannot work. Life is important. We are here for a short period. One thing that I will do, and one thing that I always try to do, is to help the human being to understand what he is. If you know what you are, you are principled. All right. So the, what, what we lack today is principle. What we lack, if the human being lacks principle. Today you are here, tomorrow you are there. You see, you know, the animal is, is actually created. And it, God has blessed it with the desires. The animal has desires. But it doesn't have the IQ. But do and you it have cannot, those it can, Listen, it cannot control itself. Malimu, if, a goat, if a goat wants something mm -hmm. and uh, the water or the grass doesn't belong to it, it doesn't have the reasoning ability to know that it is not mine. As much as I need it, I need to control my desires. It doesn't have the IQ. But the human being was blessed with the IQ and, and the desires. People were killed in Westgate. Mm -hmm. Why? Who killed them? Do you think this country doesn't have the intelligence 
enough to, okay. to listen. All right, listen, Malimu, listen. Malimu, we will get to that. I'd like us to follow a systematic um, uh, approach to, to our conversation. Let's talk about what happened in 2013. You were the unknown factor, but you came up and, and surprised and captured the heart of the electorate. Um, you placed fifth with over 52,000 votes, slightly over 52,000 votes. And then in the eyes of some Kenyans that we have asked on social media, they say, but then after that, they didn't see you for quite a while. And then just about a year to the election now, um, we have you reemerge. Tell us about the journey you have walked with Kenyans uh, through that. Where have you been? Why haven't they heard as much of you as some of them may have wanted to um, that says you are still with them even between the two elections? You know, when a society loses discipline, it is very difficult. What do you mean by you, 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 you reemerged? I came because that is how the Constitution wants it. You called me today. You called my number. You got me or you didn't? You got me. If every morning you called me, I was available. But, you know, there's something that brings you to the... To, to, to the uh -huh. to, yeah? Let me put Listen. it this way, Malimu. Listen. Let me put it this way, Malimu. Kenyans... There have been a number of issues that the country, Kenyans, have been going through. There's been corruption scandals. There's been Westgate that you have uh, just mentioned a little bit before. Kenyans are saying, but where was Malimu Dida's voice when, in terms of speaking when, out for some of those ills leaders, that were in the country? Leaders, when leaders were to be chosen and IEBC cleared us, you cannot talk before you are cleared. When you are cleared, there is that time span. Between 30th of May, every morning from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., up to 5th of August, please tell Kenyans what you have. That is what we did when it was appropriate in the, in the last elections. And right on the podium, I told Kenyans, these leaders who are singing that when you elect them, it will rain blue band and mukate are just cheating you. They are liars. They failed as cabinet secretaries. They failed. You know, leadership is not something that your community will impose on you. Leadership is not something that you Do buy. Do you think you should have pointed out some of Excuse those me. ills in the five I years? I said in the live media, look at the debates, revise, go to the YouTube no, and no, look no. at it. After the debates, now, after listen, the election. If I told you uh -huh. this is the situation and you go for it, so that is Kenyans, your choice. Okay, great. Choices so are, have consequences. Great, Molimu. So are Kenyans responsible, you say? Are they to blame for the bad leadership that you speak of? Is it their fault? Msiba wakujitakia hauna kilio. They went. We told them Uhuru Kenyatta is a victim of ICC. A lot of time may be consumed. And they are good in just politicking. The whole five years, you elect a leader today, Nothing else. What they do is just to talk of that one is bad, this is this, nobody will sit down and work. When the gentleman was released from ICC, how I don't know, he started forming coalitions and campaigning. He was supposed to apologize and sit down and work. Now, if you went for it and you were told mm -hmm. this is just cheating, mm -hmm. we have been, we were born in this country, we know how it comes, they, they are talking of, oh, we are giving you free so they education. So, we are so Kenyans this. should not complain? Kenyans, they got what they asked Why for? should you complain? Why should you complain? And that is your choice. Okay. Let's talk about some uh, issues that are here. Um, and if you talk to these leaders, uh -huh. an African leader, Kamamutuni Kipov, he does not see. Mm -hmm. And he is dumb. He does not want to listen. You know, you cannot waste your time telling. Okay. If a person right. appreciates... Uh -huh. If a person appreciates brother, it is not like this. Mm -hmm. It should not be like this. You can, you can comment. But that is not the norm in Africa. It is not like that. Uh -huh. In Kenya, it's not Malimu, like that. Malimu, it sounds like you're, you don't think very much of these voters that you are hoping to woo um, over to your side. You say um, you told them they didn't listen. You have... Allow me to finish, Malimu. Yes. Um, you said you told them they didn't listen. Um, you're talking about that. That is what happens in Africa, but these are the same voters, Mwalimu, that you want to woo, and in some respects, it sounds like you're telling them that they are to blame for quite a bit of what's happening. So how do you reconcile the two? Um, they have... Do you think the voters... They have 
don't have the mind to choose the right leaders, why then should they choose you? They have the choice and they have the experience. But they didn't choose you in 2013. Yes, because they, why will they, they choose think, you now? They think mm -hmm. the change they are dying for will come from a bigger tribe. They think the change they are dying for will come from big pockets, uh -huh. which are phenomena and philo philosophies that has failed them. So why are you in the failed. race? Why are you in the race, Mwalimu? If you think that the voters only care about the big tribes, about money, why even bother? If you want, if you don't know, if you don't know. You know, when, you are, when you're teaching language and you teach your young child to pronounce the word K N I. F E and he pronounces knife. You tell him okay, and you will keep on teaching him until he will understand the phonological aspect that the K is silent. We as teachers we do not get tired. We can see the mess that is going on. That is why we sacrifice. That is why we stopped what you are doing mm -hmm. to, to help them understand. But right. let me tell you, I'm not the type, and I will never be the type. Leadership, a leader, many leaders in this country, have, potential leaders, have gone non-committal because they know the character crisis in this country. They know how people behave. They know today Kenyans reason with their stomach, their belly, than reasoning with their brain. So many of, so many of Kenyans, so many of us can help this country, but they have decided, let me not just justify myself and I do my own things. The few of us who come to the platform to educate, you know, we have all it takes to sacrifice for this country, to educate them and to improve. Um, I'm interested to know your thoughts on uh, the education curriculum and the reform that is underway it at is the moment. Rot. It is rot. Where, I mentioned this, so many doctors are there. Every year we have graduation, doctors are there, engineers are there. <laughs> but for medical, we go to India. Yeah, for infrastructure, we are assisted by the Chinese. We are the engineers produced by universities in this country. But the it curriculum is, is undergoing reform right now. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on that specifically. Is it a waste of time? What do you uh, think of 844? If I was marking whatever education system we have in this country, I will have given it a quarter out of four. Are you talking about 844 or the new one? It's just plus one minus one. I'm sorry, I don't understand what that means. Plus one minus one is zero in mathematics. You bring one and you take one, uh -huh. then it is zero. For any education system to propel and to be of actually help to anybody, mm -hmm. one, by the end of that system, whether formal, informal, or non-formal, the three are acceptable, the person long term should be intellectual. Should actually, it should protect the intellect. Today, our children are bigger in size, but small in brain. So what do you propose? I what propose, would, what I pro would education look I, like under your leadership? It must have four criteria. Mm -hmm. It must meet four criteria. One, it must actually accommodate. People should respect God in at whatever system we are doing. If I'm alone, I should know that God is with me. If we are two, we should know that God is the third. If we are three, God is the fourth. We started our system wherever God started, how we started. We are in a, Kenyatta is not there, Mzejomo Kenyatta, Oginga Ondinga, all, all of us are going. Where are we going? Respect for God should be something that must be achieved from the education system. Number two, the education system must teach us how important our bodies are. You cannot take cocaine or sell cocaine or take bang or take shisha. Yeah, you cannot, no. This body is very important. We are teaching anatomy only to those in medicine and health sciences. This, the body belongs to all of us. We should know, we should know how we should take care of our body. <laughs> I don't want to mention that, but so many things, so many money is going wasted because we don't know what our bodies need and what our bodies don't need. Somebody takes six slices of bread, six slices. So this would all six be in the slices. curriculum, Malima? Let me tell you, yes, six slices uh -huh. of bread. Uh -huh. It's just committing suicide. 
Because one slice, okay. one slice of bread has 128 grams of calories to keep Understood. you for the day. Understood. Now, Malibu. number three, yeah. you asked me, number three, yes. the education system mm -hmm. must teach us how this world is important. We must add value. You came to the KTN, you were here for maybe four or five years, you must leave KTN better than it was in terms of environment, in terms of order, in terms of the structure, you know? So let's talk about that the structure world, listen, in the education we are living, system. We are living in Kenya uh -huh. as if we want to shift tomorrow. Malimu? Mali, Umma, Suji, Nini, Malimu? you don't care. I understand Number that. four. You're talking about the Number value. Four. Can we talk about the structure of the education listen, system? It should be based the on this. The number of teachers? It should be based, what about the number of teachers? We have so many teachers. We, we have, have so more many teachers, teachers than we need? Well, do you know what happened in higher girls secondary school? Girls who are in is a boarding school, girls who are in class. A teacher picks a foreman girl, 15 years old, brought by the parents, and kept her in the toilet for more than two hours. The head teacher and the deputy will hide it. What education system is that? Number okay. four, uh -huh. the education system should be based on, I will leave this world. He died peacefully, he died peacefully, I have read. The worst war than the First World War, the Second World War, the Vietnam War, what all war, is if you leave this world to meet God and you are not prepared. It should be based corruption. People talk okay. of corruption. This is immorality. All right. This is lack. How, listen, you went to Form 4, how does it help you? How is a Form 4 different from a Class 8? Graduate. How is a, a, So what a, is the a, problem? What do you think is the problem in the difference uh, therein? What is the challenge and what would you structurally, tangibly um, fix about the a, education a first sector? A year student in the mm -hmm. university, second semester, mm -hmm. second semester, if you just pop in class and give exams pertaining first semester, it's zero. The lecturer is loaded with so many things. Jana Usiku Alifundisha, a university in Pwani. But, he's you, said traveling, have, he's, but you said we have enough teachers, Malimo. Let me tell you. You just said we have enough teachers. Teachers are there, mm -hmm. but if you don't know how you are supposed to do it. Okay. Every three bedroom house is a school. Every three right. bedroom house is a school. Let's talk about the how. How much do you think would be needed per year um, to fund the free secondary education? Um, a number of the political outfits out there, NASA and Jubilee, are talking about free secondary education. What are your thoughts on that? Where would we get the funding? Should we have free primary education? How much do you think you would invest as president in the education sector to enable free secondary education per year? You know, if you are an animal, uh, you will not know even what you need. What do you need in a school? In terms of food, in terms of, uh, uh, of books, in terms of the teachers and their salaries, what do you need? Tell me, Let me tell Malimu, you. what do you need? A How lot, much do you a need? A lot of money mm -hmm. goes to food that is not even relevant. What so we, what, what we will, so what, how much? What Malimu? we will need to invest? Malimu, you need to give me some specifics, Tafadali. How much would you put in education mm -hmm. as opposed to food, for example? Madam, we have experts in every department. We have but you're an expert in listen, education, aren't you? Listen, You've been a teacher for uh, a number of years. Is, so this is something is that you are aspect, probably well versed There is the aspect well of education with. administration. Uh -huh. There is the aspect of economics in education. Mm -hmm. There is the aspect of the classroom teaching. We have so many departments in education. What, as the president, mm -hmm. I'm a supervisor. What I'm supposed to do is to give the, the morality required the general guidance required in security, we need this, in education, uh -huh. we need this, and then experts will take it. Experts will take it. But so the excesses that we have today, uh -huh. the excesses that we, ha we have today can be reduced. What we need more are the resources. Our children are not exposed. All right, Malimu, Our children, I hear, Malimu from what I hear you saying, the problem in the country is a morality issue? Morality that determines everything. Uh -huh. If you are immoral, Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can control you if you are immoral. There is nothing that, there is no sincerity. Mm -hmm. If there is no sincerity, you will tell me this glass of water is 500 shillings. I, I, I gave an example last time when you interviewed me here. The, 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 the teacher was told by Kenya National Examination Council, 
bring the passport photo of, of form for students. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The head teacher. The head teacher calls the, he agrees with the cameraman, the photographer that we need this. And they agree is 100 shillings that's required by, by, per student, and they're 500 students. Now he calls the, the, the deputy head teacher and he says we need 200 to be brought by the form force. He has added already 100 shillings. The deputy head teacher will call the class teacher and will tell him we need 300 shillings. The class teacher will tell the students we need 400 shillings. The student will tell the mother we need 500 shillings. The mother will tell the father we need 1,000 shillings. If everybody is corrupt, if everybody is stealing, yeah. you know, let me tell but you. But Malimu, let me tell you. When you talk about morality and when you talk about corruption, for example, um, the things that would enable people to stay on the straight and narrow are the laws. Do you believe then, because you're talking about morality um, being quite scarce in the country, is the problem the laws that we have? Because that is sort of what would help to enforce morality. Or do you think otherwise? Do you think the laws that are there in the country are able to fight corruption, for example? We formed the anti-corruption. We formed the anti-corruption. But the anti-corruption is corrupt. What do you do? Follow the law? Anything will improve if you have self-discipline. It is up to me to tighten my safety belt. So Malimu, how will you instill self-discipline in, in the 45 two million Kenyans? I, will prepare, I have prepared two lectures. Uh -huh. One lecture is entitled, You Are the Most Valued. It will go for two hours. You know, you guys in the media are good in showing Pango Wakando, Condom, Tasca, Suji, Guinness. There are so many important things than that. Give us the avenue, we talk about what Kenyans need. If they know their value, number two, I prepared a lecture entitled The Eight Stages of Human Development. Mm -hmm. So Let me tell we, you, yeah. if you have no respect for God, mm -hmm. you cannot respect your own mother. You cannot respect your country. You cannot respect the school rules and regulations. So how would you, you ensure cannot, let me tell that you, all Kenyans Kibaki, have respect for President God, as you put Kibaki, it? Uh -huh. Say it. Primary is free. But there is no free primary in any, any school. Because the president will say, and the school administration will never listen. They have their own cutates. They have their own disorder. So how do you make them listen, Mwalimu? Is it the lectures? Will Kenyans then be Let me tell um, you. listening? I mean, what are your proposals? Would you then ask the media to air your lectures? And would that perhaps be the start of changing morality in this country. I'm looking for the how, Malimu. We will talk about God. We will show people. The other candidates talk about God. They, show, they talk about God? Yes. Then that is good for us. They pray, they go to church, they go to the mosques. You can go to the mosque and you are the worst attack. So what's that the difference That's then? practical. What's we the have, difference, We Malimu? have practical systems. Let me tell you. Look at the when you walk in town, near your house, there is, a, there is a small old building. I think the first building that was constructed in the 1950s, 1960s is a small building. It was, engineering was not as it is today. Universities were not as many as they are today. But if you look at that house, if you look at Kipande House, if you look at the Macmillan Library, the buildings are smart, the buildings are strong, but engineers with PhD are constructing, and after two weeks, it is collapsing. Uh -huh. Why? Is it that they don't know engineering? Is it that they don't know architect? Is it that they don't know this? No. If you are Mujuaji, if you don't have respect for God, God will just do one thing. There will be no blessings in your life. There will be no blessings in your education. There will be no blessings. The 100 shilling that our father, my, my father worked and was, when he worked, was paid end of month, uh -huh. was enough to sustain his children and develop. The same 100 shilling. Today we have so many of the hundreds, but what is lacking is not the money has changed, but there is no blessing. Okay. Number one and number two, A and Z, Kenyans must stop what they are doing and have respect for God. All right. Respect for God will inculcate self-discipline. Uh -huh. And self-discipline will change lifestyles. What we lack today is not discipline. What we lack today is self-discipline. Mwalimu, do you think God is punishing Kenyans? Yes. One of the indicators 
that God is not happy, mm-hmm. prices of commodity go up. You will see somebody who doesn't understand religion and who doesn't understand philosophy mm-hmm. who will talk of tutatoa jubilee kwa sababu bei ya unga imeenda juu. It is not jubilee. This world does not belong to jubilee. But This yet, world does not belong to anybody. This world belongs you, to God. But yet you, Mwalimu, are seeking to remove the same jubilee from power. Do you think they have the blessings of God? Do you think Kenyans have the blessings of God? And are you then saying you are the savior of Kenyans? God loves Kenya. God loves Kenya. And if it was not God and his bounties, Kenya was eaten right, left, center na hengeweza kusha they wanted to finish it and you are supposed to be refugees elsewhere mm-hmm. imagine kenyans are, are displaced in their own country lakini mungu tu god is just keeping us mm-hmm. god is just keeping us because of the mercy of god we are surviving let me tell you it is not that we are lacking engineering it is not that we are lacking medicine it is not that we are lacking experts kenya has all it takes mm-hmm. but the only thing that is missing from kenya and if we think about it and if uh-huh. we are sincere about it if uh-huh. we are sincere about it right. we'll change this country is self discipline and self discipline is respect for, for the god. god respect for the creator so why do we need you if all kenyans just decided to respect god what would your presidency um, hope to achieve because kenyans are capable of respecting god on their own or are you saying that they're only able to respect god through your presidency they are theoretical in respecting god and how would you make practically, it practical practically uh-huh. we need to respect god and let's talk about that then would I you think i have a package uh-huh. i have a package mm-hmm. my all my manifesto is just five page the package is what we call the triple eight package if we can listen to this and we are disciplined in this life expect- expectancy will improve god will bless this country today because of failing to respect god mm-hmm. the humanity that was created by god from one father and one mother yeah. have gone into sections and subsections and subsections and uh, you see a human being abusing another human being a human being stealing from Malibu, another human being should there be a distinction between state and religion it is one and the same when you are coming to this you are leaving your room coming to this uh, your place of work you, ca- you started with the prayers when you boarded the matatu or you started driving your car you, there is no time you can lock god outside in sleeping there is god in walking there is god in dressing there is god in thinking there is god in walking there is god so under your administration state and religion would not be distinct from each other they are the same okay they let's are the talk same. Ab- okay all right molimo I, i think your point is made on that let's talk about um food security millions of kenyans um and i know you've alluded to this um a short while ago um talking about the fact that god is holding the country together and perhaps um the reason we may have disappointed god is when we see the high food prices So what is your solution to food security how would you solve this problem um beyond turning to god because i think your point on the role of god in our lives is very clear molimo but what are some of the tangible measures that you would put in place to ensure that food prices are affordable for kenyans and that kenyans have access to quality food in terms of policy productivity is low every kenyan must be productive every kenyan we have the land we have the water we have the human resource if you go to town and if you walk around you will see youth just somebody you you had business in town you came you are looking for a parking somebody is standing there five of them just by directing you to a parking they need to be paid you ask them are you do you work for the city of scary mm-hmm. no what are you doing here i i am supposed to do my things and i need a parking i know i need a parking what are you doing here all of us if you are elderly we will take care of you if you are young we will take care of you but every kenyan must work and the most blessed activity 
that is paying mm -hmm. is agriculture. We must invest. I remember so many... Except so agriculture many, so many, so isn't so fetching as good prices for many farmers. Why do you think that is? Um, many coffee farmers have cut their bushes. It's now being turned into real estate. The prices of other commodities like tea. Um, so why do you think we're not able to, if to the, fetch the right prices if the farmer, for our food? If the farmer uh -huh. struggles and has his product, and then, because you don't understand the value of your country, you want to import everything. You want to import everything. Now, what, where will he take the produce? But Kenya does not produce enough maize for its own usage. It can produce. In it what can way? Produce. In what way? You know, when How? you bring sugar from Brazil, uh -huh. and you bring sugar from anywhere, and then you packet it, and you write, mumias, mumias, and you are doing this. You know, the sincerity is not there. Mm -hmm. If we encourage the local things that we produce, if the president of this country will be unwell and he walks to Kenyatta Hospital, Kenyatta Hospital will have value. But on a part of Makidogo, you are taking to Germany, you are taking to Brazil. Okay. Food will come from... Now, people will think, uh -huh. if this maize I have produced, if this coffee I have produced does not have any, the market price is low. And if I take it to those who buy, I'm not paid. I'm not paid. What do I do? What is, what is a hot cake? Okay, a hot so, cake is I, all right, I, I so, destroy this so, and I make... I but go Kenya to doesn't live in isolation, Mwalimu, and some talk about the international prices uh, and how Kenya is competitive with the kind of crops that we grow. Um, so what would your policy be like when it comes to um, you know, our exports, the prices that we fetch uh, for our goods uh, abroad, about mechanized farming, for example, and about... Um, whether we have value addition, because you're speaking about agriculture specifically for food, um, but some say, you know, agriculture isn't just for what we eat and what goes into our bellies. Um, could you speak to us about value addition uh, for our agricultural products, where you think that is in the country right now and what you would do differently? 70% of livestock come from Northeast. But the animals die because of a perceived attitude Years ago, they were referred to as shifta or bandits. Now they're referred to as terrorists. You know, because of tribalism, because of funny things. Look at the I don't understand what this has to do with value addition, Listen, with my question on that. If a Chinese businessman will buy the skin from the locals at 20 shillings, they buy it at 20 shillings, they bring it here to in this area by lorries. They take it and finish it to China. Mm -hmm. The Chinese will buy, look at the surface that you have. It is leather. Nile ngozi yako ya ngombe, the same, same gozi that has been used and you are buying it with 700,000. We cannot make this here locally. We cannot buy the, make the belts here locally. When we have 70% of the livestock here, we cannot do that. We cannot create employment. We cannot have them produced here and we take them. You know, the value of whatever you have will increase if you are exporting. Kenya is, is importing even always, always, your cotton. And all, all the companies that we had in, 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 in Kenya producing oil and whatever have moved out of this country and they have gone to the East African country because electricity, monopoly in electricity, today you will be told your electricity bill is half a million. Now, I think Somalia is the only country that is next to Kenya when it comes to electricity bills. All those companies that will have produced have gone outside to a place where electricity is cheaper. Mm -hmm. You see? How now, do we make electricity cheaper, Molimo? But you, you, you actually come up with, with ele uh, systems that will generate electricity. We yes. have one company. We have yes, but some say the Jubilee administration has made some significant investments in that. In fact, we saw all carrier phase five, I believe, being launched. You know, Taking a look at that, there's the wind uh, you, tunnel you, system in Turkana, looking at alternative sources of energy. Do you think they've done if enough? If you are not sincere mm -hmm. in any project you are doing, Look at the, the railway. Oh, Kenyans were excited. Oh, kuna railway in Atoka, Mombasa, coming to Nairobi, four hours, whatever. Mm -hmm. Magufuli has a similar project. 
the distance is almost the same, but they are using for the whole project 105 billion. Kenya has used five times. You want to bring this glass? It is good that we needed a glass, but you want to exaggerate. Una exaggerate. That railway was exaggerated and for 50 years to come, repaying the money that was borrowed from China and putting it. Okay. Not. As we close, I want to um, have you listen to some of the comments that have been coming in. And you can just give us uh, your closing uh, comments on that and why Kenyans should vote for you um, on the 8th of August. Grace Wanjish says, I don't know what he stands for. All I know is he's a Kenyan citizen with rights like all others to do what pleases him. Good luck, though. Paula Cheng says, Dida won't get even a quarter of the votes he got last time. Um, and then... Um, Mwalimu, when will you visit Kisumu for your campaign, says uh, Jacob Okucha. George Ombuak says, how will you restore morals and self-discipline to Kenyans? Mwares Samwebi says, Dida marveled us in 2013. We already moved on. Um, and uh, quite a number of others. Uh, Ezra Kanda says, there is nothing tangible I've had Dida say so far. Um, so what are your thoughts? on all of these, and there's a number of them. Um, some are for you, um, others are not naturally, it's an election. Your closing comments, your parting shot to voters, some of whom say they don't know you, others who say, you know, they do identify with a number of the things that you have said and will vote for you. But tell us why you think you will be successful the second time around. I've read in many books, that they have eyes, but we'll never see. They have ears, we'll never hear. They have brains, we'll never reason. And I have read, God has created the angels who have the IQ, but no desires. The God has created animals that have desires and no IQ. He has created us and he has given us both the IQ and the, the desires. If the human being will use his IQ to understand who God is, where he came from, where he is, where the person is going, and number one, in anything you are doing, in anything you are doing, you put God first and you respect God, then God opens up. God will open up our engineering department God will open up our medical systems. God will open up our economy. God will give us. But he says, if the man that we created and placed to represent us in this world will worship his desires, will worship his tribe, will worship money, God himself says, I will cause them not to see. By the way, it is human anatomy, and I propose that in a PhD, we have these eyes, but we don't see by these eyes. We see by eyes that God has mentioned. We need to study this. Okay. We have ears. Ile masikio ya Kenya ni kubokubwa, but they will never listen unless God will open up. Alpha and Omega, I'm telling them, is not rocket science. Respect God and everything will respect you. Put God first and God will put you first. What we are lacking in our lives uh -huh is not unga, is not mchele, is not no. What we need is God to bless us, blessing, baraka, baraka. Mukipatia maskini barabarani shilingi kumi, the maskini will tell you barikiwa. Uh -huh. Barikiwa is what we lack because we are not sincere. Okay. What they want to be told is, we will build universities, we will build this. What universities? If the students in the universities are just, how many graduates graduate. How many do we have? Okay. And there is nothing adding to Kenya. We, we're last time, time, last we're time, time last time, we had food. This time, we don't have food. Okay. If, if security is better today, if education is better today, if health systems are better today, mm -hmm. you know, if you are proud, if you, you can buy and you are not frustrated, uh -huh then we don't need to change anything. Mwale, but we have if, to all leave it that, at that for now, if all that is in a stake, if all that is in a problem, uh -huh. I will not tell you you need engineers, I will not tell you you need economists, I will tell you you need God 
and practically God in your life. Thank you. If, Thank if you, Malimu. Kenyan, Respectfully, we are out of Kenyan time, sphere, sir. Kenyan Please. sphere, that <laughs> aspect of God in their life. Okay. But we're telling them. God is good for Malimu, you. Malimu, thank you very much. We've run out of time. Malimu Abdu Badida from the Alliance for Real Change. Is he your president? You have eyes you do not see. You have ears you do not hear. Will you see? Will you hear? On the 8th of August, and choose him over the other seven presidential candidates. You be the judge. The conversation continues on social media. The hashtag is Meet the President. Thank you very much for watching our show tonight. And thank you very much to my guest presidential candidate, Mohamed Abduba Dida. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Good night.